Uh, so this week in Saudi tour, Santiago Butrago has been a bit of a revelation. People don't know too much about him. I did a tweet about him this week, but I thought let's actually go through some solid data and see how good the boy is. So the man who really alerted me to him was uh, La Pedal Deuce. Now he has got some really good data, to be honest. He does a lot of Strava analysis as well as combining that with results, and he predicts who's going to go well. So this is his scouting report number 22. Um, so he goes through his early races. You can see like third GC at Vuelta de Porvenor, uh, which I believe is a Colombian race where there's probably some pretty sort of people. Then sixth in Valladolid, obviously a classic uh, under 23 race, good there. 13th GPR Industria Artigianato, 18th Catalunya. Then this year, he, uh, then last year he also got a result in um, Circuito de Gechico. Um, but you can also see some of his power here as well. So he did 6.7 watts per kilo for 20 minutes. And we're gonna go into some of his other results now. So you can see like, on the stage in so he's fifth in Croatia youth tour 33 overall is not crazy but you can see in Burgos he got seventh on stage five which was a pretty hilly race in addition Circa de Getschko 1.1 third there um, in Settimani Ciclista Italiana um, he won the mountain stage third in the youth classification and 15th overall again a pretty solid result so you can see like nothing crazy so far but like all solid results and 13th Industria and Art and Artiginato is a pretty good result so we're going to go through some of his numbers now which um which we'll see before. So you can see here again, it's like 594 watts uh, for one minute is pretty good. But if we actually look on this power curve, you see what he did for two minutes was also really, really impressive here. 475 watts, um, which he doesn't really have his watts per kilo in. Um, but if we analyze it here, you will see eight watts per kilo for three minutes here is again, a strong result. Um, and then for, te for te one minute, he also did 10 watts per kilo, which is again, impressive in the middle of a race. We're now gonna go into his next, mo probably most impressive numbers, which is 400 watts for 20 minutes. At 59 kilos, that's again really, really strong. 6.7 watts per kilo. Um, I think maybe it's Pami Mayo over read, it could be more like six and a half, but even so, super strong numbers nonetheless. Um, now, this week I want to go into Saudi tour because I think that's really where he, for me, impressed quite a lot. And the reason I didn't do a powered analysis straight away was because from stage one he didn't do it. Um, and you can see here in a national race he won that as well. Circuito 38 Manizales. Sorry, my Spanish isn't great. I don't really speak Spanish. Um, so if I've got any of the pronunciations wrong, just let me know. Uh, but yeah, he won to the second stage and then he was eighth on today's stage, but we'll have a look at some of his climbing performances. Um, so if we go on to this stage, which was on Wednesday, um, generally quite an easy stage before the finish. So if we look at the normalized power, 227 watts for three hours 45. So again, nothing really too hard. Uh, but I want you to have a look at the last part. So what happened basically was a really steep climb into the finale and then a flat bit. Um, and he had quite bad position. So if we look at the actual whole effort, uh, he did 8.2 watts per kilo for four minutes. I think it might be a little bit less maybe. Um, I think it could be more like eight, but anyway, eight watts per kilo for four minutes is really, really strong. Um, but again, you can see that like it's pretty spiky, but anyway, he was sort of in bad position on the steep part, moved up and then did a big attack um, to, get a, to get separation. He went across with Daniel Oss. You can see here it was like 513 watts for a minute 52, which again is almost nine watts per kilo. If we look here at his peak two minutes, which I think is really impressive from a, a Colombian guy like this, you'd often expect him to be less punchy and more for the long climbs, which obviously he's good at, but I think his punch is actually what's most impressive for me. Like nine watts per kilo for two minutes is really, really strong. Um, but also the way he out sprinted um, Ballerini, which I thought was a, an, again, pretty impressive. Um, if you look at this sprint here in isolation, 763 watts for 18 minutes, 18 seconds isn't crazy, but a peak of like almost a thousand watts for a 59 kilo guy is again strong at the end of such a hard race. And um, he did beat him by a good amount. So again, super strong numbers on the short stuff. Um, if we look at again, five watts per kilo, uh, for five minutes, he did 7.7 watts per kilo. So again, super impressive result from him um, and won the stage. Now we're gonna go on to today's stage, um, which is slightly, well, it's more interesting. Um, so he actually lost time in the crosswinds today, which is why you can see it's a lot harder stage, 290 normalized for close to four hours, which again is, it's pretty impressive numbers, like five watts per kilo for four hours is always tough. So you can see this bit here, 280 watts just before the start. So if we look at the kilojoules burn per hour, 824 for a small guy, that again is is pretty good. You can see here it's really hard, but it's a shame he lost out in the crosswinds because to be honest, like he looked, he was probably the strongest climber again on the day. I don't know how deep he went because obviously he knew that at the top, it didn't finish at the climb. So this is the little segment I've created here. Um, and you can see for this 11 minutes, he did 6.7 watts per kilo for close to 12 minutes, which again is really impressive. Some people who were calculating it said it was like 5.8, but I think they're just, they're just chatting um, because if you look at the speed and the numbers, it does, it does sort of add up. And here it was like 15%, 12K an hour, seven watts per kilo. So again, super impressive numbers. Uh, and then over the top, actually, he, he got forced to work quite a lot. So you can see here again, 
um, for these seven minutes. So it's 57K an hour, it's slight downhill, like negative 1% with a bit of a tady, um, but he was working pretty hard. And again, did some pretty big efforts towards the end, like 550 watts for um, 40 seconds. But if we look at his total, like half an hour power, and I think this is pretty impressive again, uh, six watts per kilo for half an hour at the end of a hard stage. Obviously that includes like the preamble to the climb and after the climb. The 20 minutes again is like close to 6.3 watts per kilo. So again, super impressive numbers from this guy. And I think it goes to show that he's got definitely good potential because he can do really well on hard stages like this, because this is like, you know, it's not as hard as a mountain stage, but it's getting pretty close. Like in terms of like on the pedals, it is pretty hard um, the whole time. Like he just, there was no real letting up. 208 normalizer is definitely tough. So it goes to show that even after 2,600 kilojoules, he can whack out good numbers, which I guess is what he needs to do. But also that on an easy stage like this, he's also got really good numbers. Um, so yeah, super impressive all round from the boy. Uh, and if we look at the segment itself, you'll see like he actually really did go like pretty well. The only guy who really um, was close was Van Heels. And even then like put nine seconds into him. And again, he had to obviously like, across the top he was he probably saved more maybe than Van Hills because Van Hills really had to drop uh, Bagioli and he actually San Butrago made quite a lot of effort you can see here again credit 420 watts ba Bagioli actually lost quite a lot of time to 364 watts so again super impressive numbers from the boy and I, I think he's going to go well this year so anyway cheers for watching hope you enjoy this little quick analysis um, if you want to see more of my sort of short form analysis I've been trying to get more active on Twitter so it's below um, but yeah Hopefully we'll get some more content uh, in the next couple of days. Remco looked like I had a big crack today, so look into some numbers and maybe put a video up tomorrow about it.